We are back on the Falcons Audible, presented by AT&T. We are not only back, but we're back after a bye week. We're, as they say in the NFL world, we're energized. We yeah. got our legs underneath ourselves. Rejuvenated. Recharged. Rejuvenated, recharged. Yeah. Good words, fellas. Yeah. Dave, did you do anything fun on your bye week? I did. actually went to Arizona, visited my good son who lives in Arizona. Yeah, okay. went out there and had a good time with what him. Had a couple Arizona? libations. Okay. Uh, Any golf? It's, it's I mean, you're in Arizona. There too. It's cold in Arizona? It's colder out there than it was here. Oh, what the gosh. hell's going? What the hell's going on? <laughs> it's supposed to be in the uh, desert. Yeah, I, mean, I came out here for so fun and sun. I see the sun, but it ain't warming me up at all. It wasn't so no, fun. It was, with it was the fun. Got to do some family. He's not going to be home for Christmas for the okay. first time that we've ever had. Uh, our oldest boy's not going to be with us for Christmas time, so shed a little tear there. But yeah, yeah. cool to spend some three days with him, kind of get a holiday mix with him. Very at good. At least you didn't have to drive this time, right? Yeah, no driving. I'm not driving that far. Oh gosh, it seems wow. like I couldn't find really? gasoline to pour my hands on my head and light myself on fire, so driving would be bad. DJ, how fun. about you? Anything fun on your bye week? Or? Uh, fun for me was being able to uh, have some family time. I had to take my little guy to practice, to yep. his games, uh, yep. all that kind of stuff. Sit back and watch a couple of movies with the fam. So for me, that was all the fun I needed. Okay, good. How about yourself? Good. Um, spent time with the family. Made an attempt to go to the 7A state championship football game, but didn't actually go because the traffic was so bad. Like, yeah. we didn't even move getting yeah. to the stadium. So, my wife and I just decided Kept to do going. a U-turn. And we went back and we decided to take our daughter to go bowling and play some video games. And so, that was a little bit more fun uh, there. But, uh, yeah, I was going to watch a football game, just didn't actually make it inside. Traffic there was crazy. It was lie. crazy. Uh, parking was crazy. I did not expect that with a high school football game. All right, so enough about our bye week. Atlanta was on their bye week. They're back on in action this week. And, guys, they are back in action with a new starting quarterback. We will dive all into the Desmond Ritter situation. We will briefly, and I mean really briefly, talk about the Steelers game the last time Atlanta was on the field. But we'll fast forward. We'll talk about the keys to beating the Saints on the road and the current state of the NFC South and where do the Falcons still have a chance in the playoffs? Got a shot. Playoffs. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> All right. Without further ado, guys, let's talk about Desmond Ritter. Okay. Hadn't really talked about him a whole lot. Third round pick Cincinnati two time AAC offensive player of the year was actually the second quarterback taken off the board, but it didn't happen until the third round. He did complete 60% of his passes in the preseason, three touchdown, two picks for whatever value you put in that <laughs> right in this day and age in the preseason. So Dave, let me start with you. Um, it's hard to say what Atlanta is getting in Desmond Ritter, but let's kind of start to hint at what does Atlanta get with Desmond Ritter? Well, you're getting a great big athlete that's six five, six six that can run. Uh, a guy that's extremely confident. A guy that is the third all time leading uh, winner as a quarterback in college football. 46 wins, uh, second to what uh, the guy that's the OC with the Cowboys now and and Colt McCoy, yeah. I think, are the three two quarterbacks that are ahead of him. Um, so he won a lot of football games, played in a lot of football games at Cincinnati. Now, how does that translate? Well, I think that what it does is the guy's used to being on the field. Now, I think he's done a nice job of lo listening and learning uh, as to how the system applies, what's there, what's not there. Having been on the sideline, Shock and I both can tell you, having been on the sideline and then starting, you see things that, that are not being taken advantage of. You see things that are being taken advantage of that you can go ahead and do yourself, mm -hmm. but then there's spots, and we'll talk about that today, yep. some of the things that the, he can accentuate. But it's a guy that I think uh, really uh, showed out uh, in practice and in the preseason games from a know-how, absorb the offense, teammate, leader, all that stuff came to bear for Arthur Smith and this offensive staff, Dave Ragone, as they watched him kind of go about his business, and then how he's maintained kind of that work ethic waiting for his opportunity. So I think you're going to get all of that. Now there's all the unknown. Yep. What's it going to be like to put him yep. in there? But I think there's a lot of excitement around it, no question. There's always the question in the NFL. When there's a quarterback that's drafted, you could say hi anywhere in the first you know three rounds where Desmond Ritter has fallen, is do you throw him to the Wolves or do you let him learn and get his feet underneath himself and watch tape and learn from the experiences from the starting quarterback that he's seen the entire season? DJ, I'm going to ask you, this question and I'm going to try to put you back into your playing days. Let's talk a little bit less about X's and O's for Desmond Ritter and say what it's like from going from being in a meeting room, feel like you know everything that's going on, but then how that gear changes once your feet actually step on the field and now you're running the offense and things are full speed ahead. You know what? There's two ways that as a backup I went about it and to be honest, 
when you get into that role, for me, I felt like nothing changed. And I'll tell you why I say nothing changed. Because as the backup, Arsene knows this, you're always one play away. Yeah. So in your mind, you have to always be ready. And this kind of goes back to that, that old cliche, you know, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Uh-huh. And that's kind of how your mindset has to be. So when you're now the guy, well, if you're not already ready and prepared and preparing like you're already the starter, then it's a shock for you. But I think guys who excel in this league or guys who are ready for that moment, they go into the situation as the backup thinking like they're their starter. Yeah. So they go in already saying, okay, I'm going to prepare every day like I'm going to be the guy. I'm going to prepare every day when I go out to practice so that these guys, when I get into the huddle, they know it's not a drop-off. And that's kind of how my mindset was when I got in the game. I wanted to make sure that those other 10 guys around me knew exactly what they were going to get because they saw it in practice. They saw it in the weight room. They saw it, you know, in meeting rooms so that there wasn't a question when you got onto the field what kind of guy you're getting. And I think – you know, for Desmond Ritter, Arj mentioned confidence. That's something that I've talked to a couple of you about, and that's the number one thing they talk about with him is, I mean, the dude played, like Arj mentioned, 46. I mean, he got, what, 50, played 50 games in college? 51, yeah, I think. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, the next closest guy is the guy who's doing it right now, doing pretty well. And Arch is, you know, Iowa State guy, my man Brock Purdy. Mm-hmm. So uh, that tells you that does have some kind of impact. A guy who's played a lot of football, who's confident, now he comes into this moment that he will accept that challenge and be ready for it. And then I go back to training camp. They didn't bring any other quarterback in at training camp. For any other backups, when you have two or three guys in camp, it takes away from the reps that you got. Mm -hmm. Well, he got a lot of reps in training camp. He's got a lot of reps in practice. I heard Richie Grant talk about him. I heard Caleb Hundley talk about him. And they all talk glowingly about him. That mm-hmm. tells you that he's doing the right things inside the building as well as on the practice field that gives you some confidence. Like you said, we, we don't know what's going to happen. Yep. It's, we all know it's totally different when you kick it off and guess what? Live it's the bullets. real deal. It's not preseason anymore. <laughs> That's the part that we don't know about. But we know that from just the small, simple size of being around this guy that – he won't take this moment for granted, and he'll be ready. Yeah, I will say as a player, if you're trying to equate what the preseason looked like to what he's going to get now, obviously things ramp up because you're trying to make the playoffs or whatever you're trying to do, win a regular season game. But Shock and I, and you as well, we don't discern when you're in the game and you're playing, you got the uniform on and you got guys around you you're playing with. I didn't think, well, this is just a preseason game. Yeah, yeah. I was playing my rear end. I was yeah. trying to make the team. I was trying to prove that I deserved to play. And Desmond scrambling out of the pocket against against Detroit and finding Bernie for that touchdown on fourth, fourth down, down yeah. that's an impactful play for him. Those are his me- last memories mm-hmm. of being on the field, um, and those are big, big-time moments. So to be able to you know downgrade what that was because it was preseason, yeah, I get it as a preseason. But in the mind as a player – we're not thinking about it. If we're inserted in the game, I'm not thinking, well, I don't have to really go that hard or they're not really going that hard because it's a preseason. That's not the way you play it. Yep. Yep. And so you're going hard. It is live bullets. It just they don't – they're not going to count that game when we go play. But you're counting in your mind from an experience standpoint. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, over 10,000 yards passing in college. You talked about the wins. Arch, 87 passing touchdowns, 65% passer his last two years. The confidence is there. One of the things that I feel like scouts, general managers, coaches, when they go out and look for players, specifically quarterbacks, they want winners, right? They want guys that know how to win, that expect to win, and they hate to lose. Mm -hmm. That's what you're getting in Desmond Ritter. Obviously, things are going to change in the NFL. DJ, I want to come back to you with this question. We've talked a lot about Arthur Smith and how well he has done as a play caller working to the strengths of what he has on the field. If you're Arthur Smith, and granted, this is not us saying this is what we want him to do. This is your opinion. How do you use Desmond Ritter early on in the game plan to get him comfortable, to get him up to speed? Is this a throw some short passes to let him feel confident, see the ball being completed? Or do you feel like this is the offense, let him run with it? I think to to start a game on the road, I think it all starts with trying to get your quarterback some confidence. Getting him some – those quick and easy throws are definitely something that help calm me down. For me, I used to tell my coach, get me on the move. Get me on the edge. Get me on the corner. I want to be able to have the run pass option where I can just dump it off or I can go and pick up four or five yards on a run. Those are some of the things that I felt like, from, from my opinion, from the way I played, that 
those things helped me kind of get into the game. But then also there were times where early in the ball game, I turn around and I hand it off, and we got four, five, six yards on first down. I look up and it's second and four, second and five. Yeah. I feel a little bit better yeah. because I'm not in third and long in the first drive of the game and have to, you know, throw a strike or have to stand in there and throw one. The run game has been very crucial. And I don't think you get away from that. I don't think you get away from what has helped you get to this point, which is be in every ball game and have a chance to win it. So I think continue to have that run game going, giving him some early some early throws, whether it's a little bubble screen, whether it's a little throw on a hitch, whether it's, you know, get him on the corner, whatever it may be. I think those things build confidence in a quarterback early, especially on the road in a place like New Orleans of all places. Yeah, it's interesting. It's such a great analogy by Shock to talk about, and you mentioned it, getting some throws. There's some ownership that, that Desmond's going to have to take in that. He's got to remember to stay fundamentally sound because he's going to be amped up. Yeah. He's going to be excited to be on the field. So if I've got a hitch route in a soft corner and I airmail it, that's not building any confidence right. for me. So right. even though it's a short, easy throw yeah. that I'm trying to help you out. I'm Dave guy. Ragone or I'm Arthur Smith and I called hitch or slant and it's there and I miss it. Ooh, I or a that. bubble screen, I airmail <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Now all of a sudden the anxiety starts yeah. to build a little bit. So yeah. as much as they'll try to help him, and I cert they certainly will, and I think Shock is da dead on on how they'll play call it, he's got to really be fundamentally sound early in the football game with his footwork and all those kind of things because you're going you're gonna to be amped. I remember yeah. my first start, you're amped up. Man, that ball tends to rise <laughs> when you're amped up a little bit. This guy's got the ability. Uh, certainly hope he has some success early. Well, not only amped up, but there's he's also going to be playing in a stadium that's probably going to be right. loud, and they're going to know that it's a quarterback making his first start, and they're going to let that presence be known. No doubt. Right? So it's not only going to be battling anxiety, it's going to be battling crowd noise, which – I always say you can put as many speakers as you want out on the practice field and crank up the volume as much as you want. There's nothing the same as being inside a stadium when there's 60, 70, 80,000 people screaming. That noise is different than the noise you try to pipe in sure. at practice. Well, and this place is different. <clears throat> yeah. And I, I had one of my early starts was in this building. This is one of the toughest places, if not the, t the toughest place I ever played. Because of the, the the lack of affection, let's put it that way, that Saint fans have for Falcons <laughs> and vice versa. We try to do it here at Mercedes Benz Stadium. But it is a loud, loud building. The 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 sound does not escape. They don't have a roof that opens up that has they have a concrete roof that it reverbs right, back right, down and it's right really so for a first start for a guy, this couldn't be any more difficult a venue that you could design. It's a rivalry game with everything on the line. Both these teams still think they have a chance, maybe postseason-wise. And you've got the fact it's your first start. Uh, it, that, there's a lot going on to that. Here's one. something that, that I hope is something that happens. And from playing in this game, playing in this building, and knowing what it's like, and we talked about how many games Ritter played in college and how many big games he played in. This game feels like a college feel of a game like that atmosphere has the college rivalry of a game so yeah. I'm thinking if Ritter's been in these games before he knows that environment that hopefully he can kind of lean back on that is okay this is what it felt like in college and it kind of calms him being on the road playing you know in a hostile environment I know this is a little bit different but this is the one venue that always felt like the college atmosphere as opposed to a pro atmosphere where, you know, it's kind of loud, but not really. This is one atmosphere where it feels like college. I'm just happened to pull it back up. I wanted to see his last game, college football semifinal against Alabama at the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. That's probably That's a, one he's not reflecting back on. <laughs> no, no, you're the 27 6, not so much. Yeah. Uh, yeah I'm well, thinking and I think more it was like, even worse than for that for him. <laughs> The atmosphere, yeah. Arsene, come on. atmosphere, right? Uh. Big time bowl game. I'm trying yeah, I'm to play off of what one. DJ was, what he, where he was going I, with this one. Good analogy. Uh, I'm hey. not thinking about that okay, game. Arch, not says, my game. Arch says not so much. <laughs> All right, so uh, real quick, here's Arthur Smith's quote uh, when they were talking about making the change for Desmond Ritter. A lot of things factored into it, but we've got confidence in Desmond. And again, there's a risk any time that you make a move, but you've got to be able to take that if you want to break through and get out of this up and down inconsistency. We talked about that a lot throughout this season. We've been in a lot of close games. We've made a lot of progress. Mm. But our objective is to get over the hump. And if it benefits us in the long term, that's a really good thing for us. Well, see, that's the key. What you just read, uh, Rack, is exactly 
people are thinking, okay, hey, we're going to get a chance to look at, at what the quarter, young quarterback looks like. That's a byproduct of the decision. Mm -hmm. That's just an ancillary piece. It's a good one. It's a good ancillary. But you're trying to get a spark. Yeah. This is an offense that scored less than 20 points several times this year, including your last two games that you've lost. You're looking for a spark to spark this football team, whether it's shots down the field or whatever it might be. This kid is coming in for that that reason. Now, to get a chance to look at him, to see him watch him play for a few games here at the end of the season, okay, that's cool, but that's not why they're doing it. It's exactly what you just said. We're looking for a spark yeah. to try to make a run to the playoffs. Well, and you guys talked about it. Like, if he can come out, make a couple of passes, you talk about spark, like that's when the rest of the team comes up to him and says, I knew you could do it. We mm -hmm. saw it in practice, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, when Desmond Ritter starts to feel all the support, trust me, he's going to have all the support. The teammates are going to have his back. But he makes a couple of throws, a couple of first downs. Then you get the defensive players on the sideline that are hyping him up. When he comes off the sideline, if they can score three or seven points, they're going to say, let's go, young fellow. Let's go do this. Let's get a victory. And I think we got to be real with this situation. I think the fans have to understand this is not what I just mentioned, what we talked about, just, oh, you're just throwing him out there for whatever it may be. That's what people may feel is happening. You're just throwing him out there to see what he's about. They put him out there because they feel like he gives them a chance to win. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what fans have to realize is this is an opportunity for him to show what he's about. But also this organization drafted him for a reason and they wanted him to come here for this unique opportunity to have a chance to go win. You got four games left in his regular season. This is not just trial by fire. Let's see what he's about. This is this guy gives us a chance to go win these next four games and push into the playoffs. This episode in part brought to you by The Home Depot. Everything you need for your next home improvement project is just a tap away on The Home Depot app. The Home Depot app digital toolbox gives you access to how-to guides, project calculators, and image search so you'll know exactly what you need to pick up. With the tap of the finger, you can rent and reserve the right tools for the job. Also, browse through millions of items from top brands that you can have delivered right to your door. Whatever your project, find exactly what you need with the Home Depot app. Download the Home Depot app today. Real quickly, let's just want I want to summarize the last time Atlanta was on the field, of course, 1916 loss to Pittsburgh at home. Uh, Marcus Mariota, 13-24, to 24, 167 yards, a touchdown and interception. Um, it was almost like we uh, the Falcons were, were like um, just slowly bleeding field goals, right? Pittsburgh just seemed like field goal, field goal, field goal. We try to get back in the game, kick another field goal. So obviously this has something to do. The kind of the icing on the cake is why we have a new quarterback. So Arch, coming on the heels of the Pittsburgh game, Atlanta had a bye week. New Orleans had a bye week, mm -hmm. right? So sometimes you say maybe you have a bye week, you get an advantage on your opponent. New Orleans had, an, New Orleans had a bye week as well. Let's take it a little bit of a step back from Desmond Ritter. What is Atlanta going to see this time around against New Orleans? Obviously, it's a different team when they faced them way back at the beginning of the season. And what do you see as some of the other keys? Obviously, Desmond Ritter's got to get off to a good start. He's got to help the offense move down the field. Other keys for Atlanta coming away with a victory over New Orleans. Well, as always, guys are, you know, we got to have London and guys make plays around the quarterback. I don't care who starts a quarterback, whether it's Tom Brady or Desmond Ritter this weekend. You got to have guys make plays around you. So the run game, as Shock talked about, is going to have to be a big part of what you continue to do. You're number four in the league running the football. I guarantee you the Saints are preparing down there and they're thinking, okay, young QB, they're going to try to run it. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to gang up against the run, which could lend itself to some pretty spectacular moments for him if he can calm himself and make some throws. Yep. One of the reasons I think Desmond's playing this week and one of the reasons I was talking about with the spark, there were opportunities missed against Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. You had guys open for touchdowns. There was two plays that we just flat missed that would have been touchdown passes that had you taken a shot at them and you missed them. So that's one of the reasons yep. that Desmond's getting the shot. He's a, he's a guy that can throw the ball intermediately and deep. You and I watched him coming out. He's got the ability to throw the ball in that intermediate deep area maybe as well if not better than any of the young guys that came out so that's that's kind of bodes well for some explosive plays I want to look at the other side of the football uh, in in what New Orleans is doing on the offensive mm -hmm. side of the ball 
They've struggled. Yep. Okay, they've turned the football over to the tune, I think, 12 times. They turn, or they're turn a minus 12 in the giveaway-takeaway ratio. I think they're second most turnovers in the league. Mm. They're also the seventh most penalized team mm. in the league. This is a team that's struggling on their side of the football. You think of Alvin Kamara in the, in the run game. They've run over the last five games for just 58 yards a game. What has been Atlanta's bugaboo or, or, or deficit when it comes to looking at, uh, at the offense is their inability, or uh, our defense is the inability to stop the run, yep. right? And so you, maybe you can exercise some of those demons and, and, and stop the run game and force them, Andy Dalton, these guys to throw the football. So that bodes well, I think, for the defensive side of the ball because you're going to, the young quarterback needs the other side of the ball to play well, yeah, too. No doubt. Yeah. And, and New Orleans no doubt. is thinking the same thing. We got to play better on the defensive side to help our guys out on offense. But those are a couple of things that stick out to me. They're now they can rush the passer still. They're still yeah. ten, they're 10th in the league in, in sacks. I think 34 sacks on the year. That's another, that's a thing you're going to have to combat hopefully with run game, short passing attack, those kind of things. That's kind of a, a quick thumbnail of what I've seen tape wise. Arch, you talked a few times this season about Atlanta's need for more explosive plays. And you just kind of touched on it. Like maybe this sets up well with New Orleans thinking Atlanta's going to try to run the football, ball possession game, slow the game down for the young QB, make sure that he's not stuck in third and 10, third and 12, third and 15. So maybe you get more man coverage. Maybe mm-hmm. you get single high safety DJ, and there are a couple of options, a couple of opportunities for him to hit a London downfield, somebody to make some of these explosive plays that have kind of been lacking throughout this season. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I think those opportunities are going to be there, and it's the reason why – I think you like having Ritter in his ball game because of what we talked about earlier, having the confidence, having the ability to be able to push the football down the field, and the fact that this team knows for 11 straight games you rush for over 100 yards. Mm-hmm. So if you come into this game knowing a team is going to run the football, guess what? You better be ready to stop the run. So that means here comes another hat into the box. Okay, you got seven, eight guys in the box now. Well, you know what's on the outside, man coverage. And I like the fact that you have a guy in Ritter who will take those chances. I don't think he'll be gun-shy at all to, hey, I got one-on-one on the outside with Drake, and I just got to give him a chance. And that's what Arch mentioned. There are times where this season where we've had opportunities to give these guys just a chance, just to put it in their area, and we haven't done that. So you have a guy like Drake. Who knows where CP's going to line up? We know mm-hmm. CP is a guy who can make a lot of plays on the outside as well. So there are guys who can make plays on the on the perimeter. And I think Ritter's going to do a good job of just giving these guys opportunities to make those throws. But I think it's important what Arch mentioned earlier is when you have those opportunities, you got to hit them. And then when you have those chances, and especially if it's early in the ball game, you're not so juiced and jacked up that you overthrow a guy by 10, 15 yards because you're juiced up. So hopefully he can – like Arch mentioned, sell himself down, especially early in the ball game, yep. because they're going to say, all right, we're going to force this young puck to, to beat us with his arm. Mm-hmm. We want to see him do it. Oh, yeah, we've heard he's got a good arm. We've heard he's gone his great stuff in college, but this is a different league. Let's see him go do it versus this competition and see if, okay, we stop the run game. Can this guy go back and beat us with his arm? Let me preface this comment by saying that every team in the NFL presents challenges, and it's difficult to win in the NFL. However, I would also say that Desmond Ritter and the Falcons, they're not going up against the Philadelphia Eagles this week. They're not going up against the 49ers defense this week. They're not facing the Buffalo Bills. They're facing a Saints team that's 4-9, and nine, yeah. that's 3-4 and four at home this season, so they have not been dominant, and they're coming off a game, their last game, that they were up 16-3 to three three. midway through the fourth quarter yeah. and they ended up losing 17-16. to 16. Yeah. So... They're not a team that's necessarily in the greatest frame of mind either, right? So it's a good situation that leads me into my next conversation is Desmond Ritter going on the road to face a divisional opponent with playoffs actually still within reach. It's going to most likely need to be as a division winner because if you start looking at wild card, there's a lot of other teams that have better records and a better divisional record for tiebreakers. But Dave... Getting winning this division with a game against Tampa at the end of the season is not completely out of reach. It starts with it this week. They're going to have to like this is one of the you, you always talk about in broadcasting. Is this a do or die? Is this a win? Yes, this is. You have to win this game this week if you want to have any possibility at the postseason at the end of the year. 
but there's still a chance. Yeah, and it couldn't laid it out any better, Rack. This is the must-win scenario is something. It's a cliche we like to yeah. use. Division game late in the season in December with you with you jockeying with a couple other teams. It's a must-win situation. You have to go win on the road in New Orleans. Not an easy place to go win. Rivalry game. We've talked about all that kind of stuff. So I don't think there's any question. There's no reason to diminish the importance of the game. I think that's great. I, I love the importance of the football game. I think it gives you even another insight into what the young kid could be potentially as you move forward an impactful game in December that a lot of your hopes are riding on, or all your hopes are riding yep. on. I mean, probably not a better test site for a guy uh, and still looking for that spark. I know that people want to keep saying, well, we need to see what he looks like. We're, we're all talking about how it's an opportunity to go win something. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the perfect scenario to maybe take a look at your young quarterback. Yeah. Uh, And guys, listen, you you want to take a look at your quarterback. You want to see if he is the future of the franchise. You drafted him in the third round, so that means you thought really highly of him. But I I went back to that point, DJ, because at the end of the day, these players, these coaches, you gain job security in the NFL by one thing, winning. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. Arthur Smith, that's his job. His job, yes, is to call plays, to get people in the right position, but he has to win games. That's what every coach in the NFL's job is. If you don't win games, you're gone. And these guys want to stay. They want to prove to themselves, to their coaching staff, to the fan base that they're the right guy for the job. So you make a change like this, and you hope that all of your evaluation through the kid, through the pre draft process and watching tape, starts to pay off. He's got some experience as far as watching tape. He's been able to study all season long. Now it's his chance to go out and perform, right? And that's what the NFL is all about. You got to perform. You got to produce. Absolutely. I, I think you look around the league, and there, there, there are a few teams right now who, uh, for you know, lack of you know better word, they're the husbands and wives are looking for what trip they're going to go on. Because, They're ready to plan the offseason trip. Because their season is done. Yeah. The Falcons are in a unique, unique place where they're still playing for the next season, which is the playoffs. And coming into this season, nobody gave this organization a chance to say that in December they will be playing meaningful football. And now you make a change. Now you have guys who still believe there's an opportunity to go win ball games. And you still got guys who believe in this team. Guys are still fighting. So there's still a lot to play for. And like you mentioned, winning ball games is what this league is all about. And it doesn't matter if, you know, you're Rashawn Evans who played a tons of football in this league or you're Desmond Ritter getting your first start. The goal is the same. And they're going to rally behind him because at the end of the day, all you want to do is win a game. You want to go into – you want to go into New Orleans and have a chance to win the ball game. At the end of the day, I think that's what matters the most is regardless of who's in there, I think they will have faith in him. And you got to realize he's been going against this defense all year long. Yeah. He's been the scout team guy. So the defense understands what they're getting in this guy. So they know more than anybody else going into this New Orleans games what number four is going to be like when he steps on the field. I'll tell you what, it tastes good, guys. I've won in this building as a starter. This tastes good. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm hoping Des can get his. I like that, uh, I like that smile right there. Right? They, yeah, yeah, the yeah. walk, and assuming they haven't changed it, the walk from the visitor's locker room back through the field, up to the tunnel, to the bus, and then the flight back home is good Ooh. after a Saints That's victory. Really no question about it. It's good, right? You walk right down the middle of that field to <laughs> so get on the bus. really nice walking okay. all the way hey, down. Hey, fellas, yeah. great job breaking it down this week. There you got it, folks. Desmond Ritter, the new starting quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons. Hopefully we broke it down for you as best as possible. But we'll be able to break it down more next week after we actually see some on-field regular Don't season action dub. of the young fella. Arch, bring and, us a dub uh, back, man. We'll try to get a dub, man. Let's go, babe. You want to uh, you want to win your way in the hearts of Falcons fans? Yeah. Go beat the Saints. No doubt no about it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get some people on your side real quick. Thanks so much for watching the Falcons Audible presented by AT&T. Continue to like, subscribe, and review Spotify, iTunes, AtlantaFalcons.com. Um, all the different avenues that you get your podcast content. We appreciate you for joining us, and we hope you join us next week as we break down Desmond Ritter, Atlanta Falcons, New Orleans Saints, and everything leading up for the rest of December. For DJ Shockley and Dave Archer, I'm Derek Rackley. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day.